Today I am really excited. I always preach that the camera you have is good enough for growing your business with video, and it, it is. But sometimes it's fun to level up the game. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about my top tech gift ideas for video creators. These are gonna range from stocking stuffers for just a few bucks, all the way up to, dang, I really love her. Now stick around to the end and I'm gonna show you my favorite tech gadget for this year that arrived literally today. I'm gonna to unbox it right here live and I've been literally waiting for this for two years. This is your first time here. My name's Trevor, Hollywood editor turned full-time realtor and YouTuber. On this channel, I teach real estate agents and other entrepreneurs to grow their businesses using video. In fact, the other day, someone posted a question in a Facebook group asking what course to take to grow their business with video. Several of my students jumped in and said, take Trevor's course. I've got an entirely free webinar at videosecretswebinar.com where I give you a taste of what's in the course, giving you secrets that are gonna help you grow your business with video. If enrollment happens to be closed when you watch this video, go ahead and opt in and I'll notify you when enrollment opens again. Also, I've got a ton of free content on this channel, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there and whack the bell so you don't miss out on future free content. Let's jump into my top tech gifts for video creators, starting with number one, Crush It, a book by Gary Vaynerchuk. That has been the most influential book on my life in the last five years, and I have crushed a lot of books. There's a link for the audio version of the book right below. You should check it out. I listen to books when I drive. It helps me maximize time. Next, stop ripping off music for your videos, man. Just go legit and sign up for a subscription to Epidemic Sound. It's only 15 bucks a month for a YouTube subscription, and it has an enormous selection of music and sound effects that will completely take your videos to the next level, like this. For a completely free 30-day trial of Epidemic Sound, go ahead and click the link in the description below. While you can completely crush it with video using simple programs like iMovie and Filmora, when you're ready to take it to the next level, you might wanna consider a program like Adobe Premiere Pro. I recently released a video sharing what's new in Adobe Premiere 2020. You can check that out right there. It's an awesome program. You can get the entire Adobe Creative Cloud Suite for $53 a month. So you always have the most recent version of all of Adobe's products. I am constantly in, obviously, Adobe Premiere Pro. I use Photoshop all the time. I sometimes use Adobe Audition, sometimes After Effects, Adobe Rush for mobile editing, and all of their other products. It's a great deal and very worth it. And also, probably a tax write-off. Let's say you've coughed up the coin for an awesome camera for recording your videos. One thing you don't want to cheap out on are SD cards. They have very inexpensive ones that may not be adequate for your camera, what you want to do. You want to make sure that you have a card that is fast enough to record video to your camera. The worst thing ever is when you're recording a video, you only got one shot at it, and your camera says, sorry, the data rate's too fast for that crappy card you have in your camera. There are a ton of great options, but I would suggest going with a brand like SanDisk and getting a card that is fast enough for your needs. For most of your needs, the SanDisk Extreme Plus is probably going to be adequate. It can record 4K, no problem, and the prices have dropped. You can get a 128 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Plus, like this one, for under 30 bucks on Amazon right now. Check out the link down below if you want to order some. Sometimes the hard drive in your computer isn't adequate for all of that video content you're creating, especially if you're shooting in 4K and even HD takes up a ton of space. So you want an external drive that is fast enough to handle your video content so you can edit it, no problem. I highly suggest that any external drive you get for video editing be an SSD, a solid state drive. Those are five to six times faster than the mechanical drives and they are smaller, lighter, and more rugged. SanDisk makes an awesome one. For about 90 bucks, you can get a 500 gigabyte SanDisk external SSD. There's a link for that down below. I was recently out of town and needed to do some editing. I had my laptop, but I did not bring my separate keyboard, so I went out and bought this. This is the Apple Magic wireless keyboard. You can get one for under 125 bucks, and it's awesome. It's the one I use every single day. Has a little port here so you can charge it like once a month. You, you need one of these. My brothers and I often talk on the phone and Voxer when we're driving, and if one or the other has bad sound quality, we immediately complain. They jumped in on Apple AirPods a long time ago. They're like, Trevor, get AirPods, Trevor, get AirPods. Well, eventually they got me a pair right here, and they're awesome. I can't imagine going back to wired headphones 
ever again. One of my brothers, Josh, recently got the Apple AirPod Pros. Yeah, they're 250 bucks, but it's like, he says the best 250 bucks he has spent all year. One thing I don't love about the original AirPods is that they're hard plastic, so they can fall out of yours, be doing something too active. But the AirPod Pros, they got little gummies in there, so they stay in. I don't have a pair yet. I'm waiting for my brothers to buy me a set. But from what I understand, they are amazing. There's a link for them down below if you want to get me a pair. When I edit, I generally hook up my laptop to two huge monitors. Remember that trip I went on where I didn't bring an external separate keyboard? I also failed to bring a monitor, so I went out and bought one. I got a 4K 32 inch monitor for under 400 bucks. I got a Samsung. The deals are crazy. Once you go on a 4K monitor, you're never gonna go back. I thought my HD monitors were fine, but now I've got that one 32 inch 4K monitor, which is awesome. And I look over to the right at my second monitor, in HD, I'm like, whoa, that looks like 1990s technology. You really want a 4K monitor. They look amazing. Get a huge one, so you got tons of room. You know, these are going, so having a bunch of space really helps out. You can get a Samsung 32 inch monitor for like 365 bucks. There's a link for that down below if you want to check it out. There's a bunch of other options out there as well. A little embarrassing, but even though I've been a video freak for many, many years, I've never owned a GoPro until now. Introducing Trevor's first GoPro, the GoPro. Hero 8. The stuff you can do with this camera is ridiculous. You can create time lapses, hyper lapses, night lapses, do slow motion, do stuff in the water. In fact, the video you're looking at right now is a hyper lapse I took when I was in Oregon recently. It just looks super cool and levels up your video game. You can also just use this for your main and only camera. With the media mod that's probably gonna be out right about now, you can add a box around this that gives you two cold shoes and a shotgun microphone to improve the sound, which is already good on this thing. It has like three microphones built in and it's good enough to record video right now with decent sounding audio that's completely usable for YouTube and Facebook. Oh, one other awesome thing about the GoPro is you can mount it on virtually anything, on the car, the boat, even on planes, on your shoe, on your head, on your helmet, and you can get some really cool perspective shots with that. And mounts are readily available. Literally for like 20 bucks, I got this entire kit full of GoPro mounts. Oh, they, they may look like they're nothing, but they take your GoPro to the next level. If you don't really want an action camera, you want just a solid studio camera that does the stuff you want it to do, or a vlogging camera, you really want to consider the Canon M50. You can get the camera with a kit lens for like 600 bucks, super reasonable, does everything you need it to do. It shoots in 4K, it shoots 120 frames a second, like great slow motion, in 720 HD, and it's got Canon's legendary dual pixel autofocus, which is better than the focus on my camera. I made kind of a first impressions video about the GoPro Hero 8, you might wanna check that out right up there. Speaking of my camera, let's talk about it. I've got the Panasonic Lumix GH5. I bought it in April of 2018, the camera was released originally in March of 2017, but now as we go into 2020, it is still the camera I would buy if I needed to upgrade. Why? Because it's the only camera that has all of these features in one package. Lots of cameras have some of these features, but to my knowledge, it's the only camera that can do all of these things still, even almost three years after its original release date. What does it have? It's got a headphone jack, a microphone jack, a full-size HDMI port. It has dual SD cards where you can just continue recording from one card onto the other one or record the same thing twice if you want to be like super secure. It also shoots in 1080. It shoots slow motion in 1080 at up to 180 frames a second. That is some killer sweet slow motion. It of course shoots in 4K, it can shoot 4K at up to 60 frames a second, and it also shoots 4K, if you ask it to, in the 10-bit 422 color space internally. There are almost no cameras that can do that. If that means nothing to you, it just means it can record some very high quality 4K video internally. It has fully customizable buttons, a whole bunch of them, and it has in-body image stabilization. I would not get a camera Without that, it takes away that shaky cam thing, even if you're not using a gimbal. In fact, I really need to use my gimbal because the IBIS on this camera is so good. It's one flaw is that it doesn't have amazing autofocus, but they just released another firmware update, and every time they do, the focus gets better and better. I paid almost $2,000 for this camera body only, but now, because it's a couple years old, you can get it for $1,300 body only, or about $1,900 with a really good lens. I highly recommend it. Check it out in the link below. 
Another great stocking stuffer or gift for any time of the year for your loved one is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And I say the Pro Max because the number one thing I love about this phone is I don't need to charge it. One charge and it lasts the entire day. I've had almost every iPhone from the very first version and all of them needed to be charged in the middle of the day. This one goes all day long. It's also got these three awesome cameras and the wide feature on one of these cameras, the super wide thing is super, super cool. I highly recommend the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Yes, I know I sound like an Apple fanboy and that's simply because I am. I know there's amazing stuff in the PC world. I just don't have any of it, so I can't recommend it, so I'm not gonna talk about it. But if you're a PC person, post in the comments below. Are you a PC guy or are you an Apple guy or girl? Post, I, I'm curious. What percentage of this world is, is what these days? Do not buy this drone. This is the original DJI Mavic Pro. And it's awesome, it's the only drone I've got right now. But if I was gonna buy a drone today, I'd get the Mavic 2 Pro. It's got a one inch CMOS sensor on a Hasselblad camera and the image quality is ridiculous. You're looking at footage right now shot with my original Mavic Pro, but the footage from the Mavic 2 Pro is even more amazing. When I crash this one into a building again or make it tumble 80 feet from a tree again and I'm out of repairs with DJI, I'm totally getting the Mavic 2 Pro. You can't go wrong, it's a bit pricey, but it's totally worth it. Drones and cameras are fun, and they create a lot of footage that you really don't want to erase, especially the B-roll shots and the drone shots that you can use again in other videos. You want to be able to store it. So what I finally did after having all of these drives and a whole bunch more, I got one of these. This is a Synology NAS. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It allows you to take all of those hard drives from all over your house from the last 10 years and stuff everything into one place so you can organize all of your videos and have access to all of them. I also have hundreds of thousands of photos. I was a photographer before, my wife was a photographer, and I got six kids and three grandkids, so we got a lot of photos. We need to put them all in one place. You can set this thing up in different RAID configurations for additional security. I also back this one up to the cloud and because it's a NAS, I can access any of it from the cloud. I highly suggest that you get something to store all of your videos instead of having random scattered drives all throughout your world. This one comes in a bunch of different possible configurations. I've got the six bay option with six six terabyte drives in there. When I bought it, that sent me back almost $2,000, but now things are a little bit cheaper. I've got a link for my exact configuration down below, but they make smaller ones, I think from two bays up to a whole bunch, like 18 bays or something. So you can make it as big or small as you want. I do not use this for editing. The way it's set up, it's not fast enough, but you can upgrade it where it can be used for editing if you want to. You really want to play it safe and back up your photos and videos, especially your family stuff. Man, you can't get that stuff back. This is the moment I've been waiting for two years. In fact, I think, I think somebody's coming. Hold on, hold on. Is that what I've been waiting for for days? Does it feel like the good thing? I was here Friday. But I was in Oregon. I've been rocking a 2013 MacBook Pro since 2013. It's mostly done the job, but I've had to replace the logic board once and it's been rough for a couple years. It's not fast enough. I needed more of everything on it. And I looked into getting a new MacBook Pro 2017 and I got one. And I maxed it out and it still couldn't handle 4K video in Adobe Premiere, so I took it back. I don't think I've ever taken an Apple product back before, but it, it wasn't ready for prime time. Finally, Apple caught up and they made a product that will do what I needed to do. Knife. Oh, baby. Even if you're not an Apple fan, you gotta admit, they know how to package a product. Opening for the first time for you. Even though I haven't used this computer yet because I literally just opened it, to I've been. English is the main language. Press the return key. Even though I haven't used this computer yet, I know it's awesome for a number of reasons. Number one, it's six generations newer than the one I've, I've been using. And number two, I've been obsessing about getting a computer that was adequate for my needs for a very long time in, in a Apple 
MacBook Pro form factor and they finally released it and so I've watched a ton of videos about it. Why am I excited about this computer? Because it can finally do what I need it to do. It can handle 4K video with Adobe Premiere Pro in a laptop made by Apple. That's what I've really been wanting. What's new? Well, it's got a 16 inch screen instead of a 15.4 inch screen, kind of whatever. You can install up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. It can now have an eight gigabyte video card finally. It can have up to eight terabytes of SSD storage the largest amount of storage of any laptop on the planet right now. It also has a massive battery, the biggest one allowed on an airplane, so the battery life is great. It has killer speakers. It has microphones built in that are pretty dang good. Not fully pro level, but, but super awesome. The base model you can get for like 2,200 bucks on Amazon. There's like a $200 off deal. There's a link for that down below. It'll blow away the prior generation primarily because of the new graphics card. So what configuration did I get? Since I am on video like all day, every day, I did a slight upgrade. I got the 2.3 gigahertz, eight core i9 processor, one terabyte of internal SSD storage, 32 gigs of RAM, instead of the 16 that's included in this model. And I got the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M with eight gigabytes of memory because that video card is gonna make all the difference. But again, the base model is probably totally amazing and overkill for most people just getting into video. Which of these gift ideas would you be most excited to give or to receive? Go ahead and post that in the comments below. Remember to check out my free masterclass at videosecretswebinar.com so you can learn to crush your business with video. If you're excited about any of the products I talked about in this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below somewhere and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content. I cannot wait to see the amazing video content you create with all of your new video toys.